What's up and welcome back to Cleats to Whistle podcast. I am Brad Valdez. This is episode seven and we are here with Coach Britt. He is the boys varsity basketball coach here at Western High School here in Louisville, Kentucky. And I just want to say I appreciate you coming on the podcast, man. Sure, sure. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, man. Uh, and it is an honor just because I, I, I look up to you, man, because it, it's crazy because when I go to games, especially basketball, because I really I'm not like a basketball guy mm-hmm. and I see how your players, you know, respect you. They lock eyes with you, man. And, and it's crazy because like we talked a few a few weeks back mm-hmm. and you said that you that your first love was actually was football, man. Sure. Really? Sure. That's crazy because you, you coach at a high level. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's high school level, but you're still coaching. <laughs> uh, but that that's that that blows my mind that you that your first love is actually football. Sure, sure, man. You know, pops put the, put the football in our hands. Me and my brothers when we was younger, uh, been in love with it ever since. From, you know, being a student of the game, studying the history of the, of the game of football. Um, you know, playing little league. You know, high school. And eventually, I ended up playing in college too. So. Okay. Uh, all my, my coaching opportunities end up happening, you know, faster in basketball. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> what I, that's what I was gonna ask you. Uh, now, where did you where did you actually play like little league and 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 like your high school ball? Yeah, little league. I played uh, for the for the Newburgh Broncos. Uh, I also played for Houston um, Browns and the Louisville Patriots, who are, I believe are still around now. So, uh, yeah. Um, then high school, end up playing at Fern Creek High School. Uh, had a couple of different head coaches there. Uh, you know, had a, we had pretty, some pretty good seasons, but you know, and then college ended up playing at Kimmelsville University. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you, so you, so you, so you, you from Fern Creek, man. You're a Fern Creek grad and everything, man. So you went to Campbellsville University, mm-hmm. and that's crazy. And how did how did you how did you get like into into basketball? Did, did you get a scholarship at Campbellsville? Yeah. So I ended up playing uh, college basketball and football. Uh, it's a collegiate, collegiate athlete. I actually ran track too, but uh, I ended up, you know, playing college basketball as well as football. Uh, had a couple of shoulder injuries that kind of limited my, my football career, so I ended up playing basketball. Just, just happened to be good enough to play at NAI level, so you know it was all good. And I went to Campbellsville, ended up transferring to IUS uh, after my sophomore year, and finished my last two years there playing basketball. Oh, nice man, nice. So, so do you have do you have any any like mentors you want to shout out right now? Oh, for sure. Uh, Wiley Brown off the top of the head. Uh, that's, that's, that's my guy. Okay. My guy for sure. All right. And and what did like what what was his uh what is what was like his his role to you uh as a like a coach uh, just or just showed you the game of basketball or just a life? Yeah, life. Life definitely. Uh, definitely. Uh, you know, a, a leader in that in that aspect uh, as far as basketball mentoring in life. You know, so he was he was definitely guiding me in a lot of a lot of things I do. I uh, reach out to him. Uh, to get you know get get answers get you know whenever I have questions anything I, I need he's he's there for me so that's good man so shout out to the coach man that that just you know what I mean it, it's crazy because you know you know what I mean you probably you're probably mentoring a few a few people too you you know what I mean yeah, just because just because of the the <laughs> the status that you're in you know what I mean you're you're gonna you, you know bring people along oh, yeah. um. And how how do you do you take some of the pieces that you learn from him and 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 put it on them? Oh yeah, you know, and and you know, I failed to mention my big brother Ricky Britt, who was probably my, my my first guy that I looked up to. You know, what I'm saying it taught me a lot of things in life. You know, on and off the the basketball court, the football field, things like that. So um, him, you know, Wiley, uh, but definitely, you know, just reaching back. Somebody somebody gave something to me, so I give it back to others. That's cool, man. Kind of that's awesome, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd love to give you a quick podcast update. We actually partnered with Abbott's Crafts for a five-episode deal. So from episode six to ten, you will see an ad for them. Very excited about this. If you don't know what they do, they actually made custom logo cups. This is actually the four-in-one. And they made me a custom towel. So go check it out. Big guy season's coming out. You're going to see a lot of dudes walking around wiping their head off. So you might as well go get a custom-made one. So go check them out, Abbott's Crafts. There's a there's a story there's I, I'm gonna tell a quick story time is because he had a kid that was the only senior on the team and his name was Carlos remember remember we talked about this 
And this kid was just, you know what I mean, just a standard role player guy. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't a starter, man, or anything. But, man, this dude, like, adore, he had to adore you, man, because the, the, way, the way he looked at you, when, you know what I mean, you, you call a timeout, you, you bring him in the huddle, he look at you, he goes out there, man, and he played his ass off. For you know what I mean? It was it was weird because they even he two points or a rebound or just you know just doing his role, man. Mm -hmm. But but when he did it, he he did it for like he wanted to 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 you for your approval. Mm -hmm. You know you know what I mean? And Carlos was a great kid. He uh, definitely helped our program a whole lot. Uh, he taught me a lot about myself as a coach. You know, um, he was a great kid on and off the court, great student. You know, but I just. Definitely, I got challenged everybody. All, all the kids I come across, I got to challenge you to be the best version of yourself every time you step on the court. Same thing in the classroom and how you conduct yourself in, in society too as well. So, very important. To me. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's cool. But it was just funny, man, because when he got on the court, it was, he was like, boy, I'm going to do something good, boy. Man, <laughs> you know? I love that kid. If I, if I could have had him about two, three, four years, oh, man. Guys, the limit. He would have been, yeah, he would have been a beast, man. Because yeah. hey, he was crazy when he got on the court. Yeah, still doing his thing now. Though. Shout out to Carlos, man. Is he? Yeah, 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 sure. He okay, was, cool. Prep school up in uh, Rhode Island, I believe. Yep. Oh, really? That's what's up. That's what's up. And you also had another kid, Trent. I don't know his. I don't know his last name. Trent Hinkle. Okay, <laughs> this kid, man. I it's crazy because I I I didn't go to like every single game or anything like that. But I did see his first points as a Western Warrior. Also, I seen his thousand point when he scored. Who was it again? A Butler? No. PRP. PR, PRP. First bucket he scored in eighth grade. In, yep. At the opening three. Yep. As a, as a as a thirteen year old eighth grader. Yes. <laughs> it was a beast. And and like like tell me tell me like what he had. You know what he means to you as, as a as a player. You know what I mean. Kids are gonna be kids. You know they're knuckleheads, man. You know what I mean. But for you having them, you know, at an eighth grader, and, and and he's just now graduating. You know what I mean. How how did how did your story, uh, like, begin, man? I love that kid, man. He Trent was the first kid to commit to something that didn't exist yet and was nothing but a vision. So. Me meeting him as a, as a 12 year old in the summertime, he came to my kids' camp that I had here at Western. I seen this kid, and I was watching him play. I seen his, his aggressiveness, his his passion for the game, just really, really, really stood out. I was like, okay, he's short now, he's young, he's young <laughs> so, but skill level was there. You know, what I'm saying? of course, you know, had to continue to develop. Skill level was there, but just the fight and tenacity he had, he played with, matched my fire. So it was like, oh man, uh, definitely. I, I mean, this kid need to need to link up, man. And you know, what I'm saying, the rest is history for that kid. So shout out to Trent, man. But he means uh, means means the world to me, like a like a son or nephew, or if you will, or, you know. So that's cool, man. That's cool, cause yeah, cause we, you know, we I seen him like you said when he when he was first when he was eighth grader, man. That was that was crazy, man. And then I seen him score that a thousandth point this year, and that was just you know a, ca a tip of the cap to that kid for just you know what I mean grinding, staying in the books, man, doing what he has to do to respons his responsibility to be on the court. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it was 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 he was what is he doing now? Uh, he is right now. He is uh, committed to Trevecca University Division Two in Nashville. Uh, so we got we got a full scholarship there. Uh, but that, that kid, man, he worked his butt off, and you know he's he's everything I wanted uh, a Western Warrior to be, on and off the court, representing himself well, the classroom, hard worker, you know, and talent. That, that's that's the extra part. You yep. know what I'm saying? So. Definitely proud of that kid. Nice, nice. And you're you're like a big body guy, man. You're you're he's the biggest guest I've had on this podcast yet, man. Making me look small in this thing, man. <laughs> but what what uh what position did you play? Uh, as a, a football player and basketball. Uh, football played a uh, receiver. Uh, my played my high school coach. You know, put me on defense a couple times. You know, I, when it's seven on seven, I'm good. But I'm not coming up in that box and, and, and hitting that 230 pound running back. I hear you. School when I was 175, 180 pounds as a senior, no way. You know, so I played receiver, played a little safety, you no know, things like that. But um, in basketball, I mean, I literally played every position in college at some point in time, from point guard to the five spot. You know, but I probably ended up playing like three, four, uh, mostly uh, at IUS. So okay, okay. And and did you did you have a number? That you wore all the time, and did it have it like a meaning to you? Nah, 
I didn't never. I didn't ever have any number that I wore all the time. Uh, Little League, it was 84 because of Randy Moss. Oh, okay. You know, that was, guy, that was my guy I looked up to, but, you know, I didn't run a 4-2, and I didn't have a 44. <laughs> but you, know, you did have the big job. body, though, right? <laughs> well, you had a big well, frame. You did, really didn't have a – you weren't stocky, though. I was really skinny in high school. Oh, okay. I had to, like, really, really put in work to to get some, some size in, in college. So I went to college. I was around 180 pounds. Oh, okay. You know, and by the time I graduated – uh, you know, after, you know, weight room and protein and everything from, from college football, trying to put put on weight. You know, I got up to, you know, my playing weight around about 215, 220 as a football player. And I ended up maxing at, at about 225 in college. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, so that's a big frame, man. <laughs> big big catch radius too, man. That's crazy, dude. Um, but, yeah, do you have any, uh, any, any like, accolades as, as a player? As in, like, uh, all district or or anything uh, or team team you know accolades. Yeah, I was all district football. Um, college, we won we won a, won a bowl game at Campbellsville. Uh, man, just won regular season conference champions at IUS. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of individual accolades like that. More team. Yeah, yeah. So football probably had a little bit more individual stuff. Uh, as far as being all district things like that, I was a little bit better in football than I was basketball. Basketball is kind of a you know a role player type guy. Okay, uh, but whatever the coach needed, that's what I was that type. I was that kid. That's awesome. And and any any like good memories, man. You got uh, as a as a player. The thing that stuck out to me most, man, was the the, the camaraderie we had on the, the bus rides, the, the the hotel room trips, the conversations, things like that. That's probably what stood out to me most about basketball. It wasn't any particular you know thing right now off the top of the head I can remember. It was just like, oh man, that was so great. But it was like. Going to the national tournament, you know what I'm saying, winning the conference conference championship, you know, stuff like that. That was, you know, pretty pretty cool too as well. But I remember it's all the all the, the memories you had and the camaraderie and the teammates you have, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, those are things that kinda stick with me now. Okay. And now as a coach, did you have any memorable moments? And do and do you have any accolades along with it? Um Probably the thing that stick out to me most probably the year we um we got I went on our little Cinderella run and went to the region championship. Um uh, my you know, three years ago. That would be Trent's sophomore year, my third year as the head coach here at Western. Uh, we, and my whole team was, you know, literally thirteen, fourteen, fifteen years old. And we was out here, you know, we was beating guys with, with teams with six, seven, eight, nine seniors on their team, you know, so that was kinda of what uh what I what I enjoyed the most and that was most memorable and I just remember the the, you know, all the tears in the kids' eyes and the hug and everything was just, you know, accomplishing because we started our season off really rough. You know what I'm saying? But I knew it was going to be a challenging year because we were so young and inexperienced. Right. Those guys were hungry. They were young. They were humble. You know what I'm saying? They was eager to learn. So definitely enjoyed coaching that group. All right. And and do you have any coaching accolades? Uh, no, nah, no. Nah, I, I ain't been no coach of the year or nothing like that. No, nothing. Not yet. <laughs> hey, and the, guy, and the guy actually said, not yet. And that's what fires me up because the guy, the guy, he's a soft, he's you know soft spoken, but man, the way he, that he command, he 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 commands his teams, it, it's crazy. Because I I watch coaches when when they're on the sideline, and it's like, man, this guy, he's he's fiery, even though he's soft spoken, man. He 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 knows what he wants, he likes what he sees. Well, it's gotta be a different animal you get between the lines. Yes, exactly. I'm not, I'm not a cut off, separate the two. You know what I'm saying so. <laughs> yeah, that's. That's good. <laughs> you got T. T. He's a wild man. He's a wild man out of, out the side the lines and inside the lines. T's sure. crazy. Sure. That's coach. Shout out coach Tory Shinholster if he was on the podcast, shout but that dude's coach wild. Shout <laughs> out to coach T, my guy. It's crazy because you say that you have young teams, but you you still have young teams. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we we I still haven't had a year where I've had more than three seniors. Yeah. Just past year I had had three. Year before that I had just Carlos, just one. Year before that, uh just Amari Taylor, Janoy Lee. So I mean I haven't had a senior led team yet. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. That's crazy, is because you've been young, I feel like this whole time. Because I see you know what I mean, I'll get the roster and I'm like, damn man, is he still another sophomores? You know what I mean? Three sophomores in the starting lineup. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And it's crazy that you, that you're doing so much, and, and you guys haven't took that next step yet. And it's be and it's because repetition. I mean, they got to be in those big games. These environments that you play in, man, you're, you're taking them out of state. You're taking them to Georgia, Florida, uh, where uh, New Orleans, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, all over the place, man. So they're getting to see like outside of Louisville too, and that and that's that's another like something I commend you too is because you're you're showing these guys there's something bigger outside the city too. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure, uh, definitely uh, some high level competition out there around the country. Uh, you know, it's got got to throw our guys to the wolves, man. See what we do. Yep, yep. <laughs> so man, this is this is a great podcast. We are here with Coach Britt here at Western. Oh, at Western High School. Um, we just got a few more questions, man. Uh, with your with your coaching staff, with you guys having such good seasons, man, do you guys get like coaches poached, or do you guys, you know, you got like ride or die coaches that are with you, man? Uh, my my guys are ride or die, but I make it a, a, a definitely a point to, you know, whenever somebody reaches out to me, you know, about a job or anything like that, I always recommend those guys because I, I I do very important to me to have a coaching tree where guys who coach with me become head coaches. So uh, just recently, Brandon Anderson, uh, about a month ago, got the job over at Central. So he's the head. He'll be the head coach there now moving forward. Okay. Uh, so I'm very, very happy for him, proud of him. He's very very deserving of it too as well. So, uh, yeah, so that's, you know, kind of where I sit with. Yeah, that's cool, man. That, but you want them you want them to expand. You just don't want them to be small-minded, right? You yeah, want sure. them to be just like your kids. You want them to be, you, you know what I mean, I tell I tell, my, I tell my guys now, y'all better have somewhere to go in about five, six years. Because when Trent graduates and Andre Weeks graduate, they come back and coach with me, and I'm firing you guys. So, <laughs> my players going to be my, my assistants, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, keep the ball rolling from there. Yeah, man. That's, that's what I said, man. I'm very excited for you, man, because, you know, we go to – we go, I go to the PRP game, the Butler game, Fairdale. Man, I, that's one team I don't like. Sorry, Fair, Fairdale, if you, you watch this. I, is there is there any – any team that's like like your like your rival like like man I every every when you when they're on the schedule man I'm I'm circling it and 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 this is it. No, I never did have anybody. You know what I'm saying I'm scheduled that I you know circle things like that. It was people tried to put things on me as far as like oh PRP and Butler. I was in the old seventh region. Frank was in the old seventh region. Yep. I wasn't too aware. I didn't even know about the Butler PRP rivalry. I didn't, I didn't know about the, you know, the Verdell and, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't know, I didn't know about these, I wasn't too familiar with these teams because, you know, in the seventh region, you know, it was, you know, Moore, Seneca, Ballard, you know, Trinity, yep. you know, Mail, you know, so uh, it's, it was all new, but it was nobody I really, we circled, it was like, oh man, we got to have this game, you know, we want to win them all, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, so I, I, I took the same approach every game, you know what I'm saying? As far yep. as doing my job as a coach, preparing them in, in every way that I knew how, you know, so. You know, let's put our best foot forward, man, and you know, roll the ball and let's let's do it. That's cool, man. I wasn't trying. I wasn't trying to bait you into uh, no, who's who's your rival. And I mean, I used to coach here at Western, you know, for football, and it was always Butler, obviously, uh, PRP when we scrimmage them. You know, it was just some just the schools that. And then I was here. I couldn't beat Fairdale while we were here. I was just like, come on, man. So, so I figured out real quick, you know, who the rivalry was by how many. Kids showed up, and you know what I'm saying people in the community. You know, yep. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. You know, <laughs> yeah, you get fired up for these games. Let's, yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Okay, we just have a few more questions. Um, with 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 you guys going into your 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 schedule, and you hit that little that little bump in the road, man, where you're, you know what I mean? Two game losing streak or three game or, or you're just down a down skid. Mm-hmm. Do you feel, do you feel pressure? And, and, and how do you, how do you deal with, how do you deal with dealing with pressure? Um, I don't feel no pressure when it comes to sports, especially coaching youth sports. How many games I win to lose is not going to determine my paycheck or going to determine my job security here at Western. You know, and my thing is getting guys to the next level and make sure they're good kids and, you know, going to the next levels of life and being prepared. You know, pressure is, you know, if I do lose my job and, and my, my son and my daughter telling me they're hungry and I have no money to feed them, that's pressure. Not the not the two, three-game losing streak. Oh, they're so talented. Why are they losing? I don't, I don't worry about none of that. You know what I'm saying? It's part of the game. It's basketball. Shots go in. Shots go out. You know what I'm saying? You win, you lose. I ain't met nobody that's ever been undefeated in everything that he's ever done in any sport. So, yep. you know what I'm saying? A loss is going to come at some point in time, you know. So, no, I don't feel no pressure. Hell of an answer, man. <laughs> hell of an answer. I love it, man. This guy is is, is, a, is a hell of a guy. Uh, we are here at Western High School here in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, this is Coach Britt. 
He's the boys' basketball coach. Um, is there any hobbies you have outside of your of your of your sports? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm I'm, I'm a, not as much as I was, but I you know, I play video games. Uh, I love to travel with my my wife and my kids. Shout out to Angel Britt, uh, my rock who holds me down. Me and me and the family love traveling, love sightseeing. Uh, not, not not much of a party. I, ain't, I don't you know. I like I love podcasts. I, I hit the road and you know play them for hours. You know what I'm saying? Just different ones, getting people different perspectives and learning different things. But you know, I that's my, my my main hobby and coaching basketball and just you know what I'm saying? Just anything within the game, I love it. Just honing your craft, man. <laughs> that's it, man. That you know what I mean? I had Anthony White. I don't you know Anthony White? Yeah, you know what I mean. He's He's all ball, man. He, he tell he, he. I came out and asked that same question. He's like, man, I'm all ball. That's it. That's it. And that and that's crazy because that's the way I am with football. So and it, it's it's just crazy that you you meet like minded people and then you're like, yeah, you're you're a dude. You know what I mean? No dude when you see one. You know what I'm saying? That that, that crazy guy too. Um, now, how do you feel about your about your team this year? This year or the upcoming season? Yeah, upcoming season, season yeah. Um, I believe this will be our, you know, our best team roster-wise, uh, having a mix of junior seniors with ability, with experience. So it's going to potentially be the best best team I'll have during my tenure here at Western. Uh, and I think we could, you know, definitely we can make a run, make some noise in the, in the district, in the region. I got to start with the district because our district is, is wild. But, you know, I think we make some noise in the district, in the region, and possibly the state as long as we, you know, continue to get, grow as a team, you know, on and off the court, uh, you know, and I, and I get better as a coach. Guys get better as players, and we continue to grow. So, we, this could potentially be my best team. Okay. And it, okay. And it's hard saying that after losing Trent Hinkle, but, you know, JoJo Lawson, you know, uh, sophomore guard, he's, he's really good. You know, Breon Faulkner, freshman last year, didn't get to play a whole lot. Special talent. You know, Elijah Clinton, Julius Evans will be back. Uh, Jaden Miles, Jalen Ellis, you know, and Tevion Lawrence. So, Kayon Gaines, another freshman, 6'6". Six, six. Uh, we, 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 we got a chance of being good. Okay, yeah, and that's a, that was my next question. If you wanted to spotlight it, spotlight it a couple guys, and, and who who would be your who would be your Trent next year? I can't say there is a Trent. There's only, there's only, there's only, there's only one. There's only one, yeah. There's only one, yep. Got that spot for yep. Me, but. Um, is the guy we'll be leaning on in, in, in definitely, definitely in, in clutch moments, probably Julius Edmonds. Julius Edmonds, shout out to you. Uh, man, uh, this is very exciting podcast. I'm glad to have Coach Brett on. Now, real quick, J.D. Miles is our most important player. I ain't going to say he's our best, either this or that, but his, his rim protection, his security blanket for the rest of the guys, you know, offensively, defensively, things like that. And he's definitely, definitely a guy that's going you know, to be able to make some noise this year. There we go. We are here at Western Early College High School with Coach Britt. It was an honor. I appreciate you, man, very much for doing this. Uh, just took, you know what I mean? I caught you at the end of school day. He's probably like, man, I want to get out of here, man. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I got time for you. Got That's right. Time. But, man, this is Cleats to Whistle podcast. And like I always say, everybody has a story. I'm here for them to tell it. Cleats to Whistle podcast.